Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. It feels good to be back in front of the camera after the hectic time at the Blackpool Magic Convention. And today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a mishmash of a couple of different things. I'm going to be sharing you some magic. I'm going to be reacting to some of your fooling videos that you have very kindly submitted to me. And I'm also going to be sharing with you some unseen footage from the convention. A couple of people came up to me and showed me magic while I was there, and I managed to get it on camera, but I didn't put it in the main video, because I want to sort of talk about it in a separate video. It was a pretty unique experience, and there is some great magic in those clips. However, I want to start this video by just saying a very quick thank you, and also a hello to all the new subscribers that I've gained since my last video. That video has done really, really well, and a lot of people have joined the channel, so I just want to say hello and thank you because this channel now has over 2,000 subscribers. That is just completely crazy to me. Absolutely just so bizarre. Uh, if I was able to travel back in time and tell my past self who was just starting up this YouTube channel that one day that it would have 2,000 subscribers, I don't think they would ever believe that. And I know that 2,000 subscribers is a speck of dust compared to, you know, the size and the scale of YouTube today. But to me, it really does mean a lot, and I just want you to know that. I am very grateful for having any audience at all, let alone an audience in the thousands. That's just... Don't understand it. Um, thank you very much. So now moving on from that very cringy part of the video. Obviously, the other week I was at the Blackpool Magic Convention. I don't want to keep banging on about it, but it is relevant to what I'm talking about. At the Blackpool Magic Convention, there is a dealer's hall. In fact, there are many rooms where there are dealers selling you magic tricks. And it is an opportunity to potentially spend a lot of money and burn a hole in your wallet on magic tricks. And fortunately, I did not spend much money at all. I wasn't gonna spend 70 quid on a close-up pad that I never used. I was gonna be sensible for once. However, since the convention, I have actually bought some items that I want to use in magic. Not magic-specific items, but these things. I wanna go through them. So the first one, I just went to WH Smith, which is a stationery shop here in the UK, if you don't know what it is, and I bought some of these. Playing card-sized envelopes. I want to teach some tricks on the channel very soon that use these. These are so useful, but I seem to burn through them very, very quickly. These are rubber bands, just WH Smith rubber bands. I want to get back into doing rubber band magic. It's been years since I've done any rubber band magic, so I'm getting back into that and I might show you a rubber band trick in a moment. And then I've also bought this, which is a lanyard. It's almost sort of a wallet lanyard. It's a bit strange, um, but I am starting to wear this at events when I do magic and have my business card in the front. I think it just makes you look a little bit more professional and also I want to do a trick that involves a lanyard. For the past couple of days I've been brainstorming different ideas of tricks that could use a lanyard. There's a load of possibilities. Seriously, if you're a magician and you've not got yourself one of these, I would recommend one. Get one with a couple of pockets, front and back, maybe a clear window. There are so many tricks that could potentially use this. You could have a prediction in it and essentially be wearing a prediction in front of your audience the whole time. I think that's a really cool use for it. But also, I sort of want to figure out a way of loading something into this, sort of hands-free in a way, so I'm working on that idea as well. And if I come up with anything, I will probably share it with you in a video or a live stream here on YouTube. Uh, talking of the rubber bands though, I said I'd show you a trick, so let's do that. What I will do is just stretch the elastic bands like this between my fingers. And all this does is make it really, really clear what's going on. Because if I'm dangling them, sometimes they get tangled up, it's a bit confusing. Like this, there's no confusion, it's really clear what's happening. Watch the lower half of the blue one. I can actually just push that all the way through the yellow one so that they really are linked. That truly is linked on, that's not an optical illusion. And if I just blow, they actually unlink completely. And these are ordinary, examinable, WH Smith rubber bands. There we go, that's a little rubber band trick. What I can also do with just one of them, I'll show you this, wrap it round these fingers like so, like that. In fact, we'll use the blue one as well, why not? You can see the bands are clearly on my top two fingers, but if I just grab them like this, I can actually pull it right through to the other fingers as well. There we go, it just passes 
straight through skin and bone. Uh, that's a couple of elastic band tricks. Very simple stuff. If you want me to teach that on the channel, I might, because they're quite fun tricks. I love, love, love doing magic with borrowed objects, ordinary objects, just things around, you know, that people might have. And ideally, I had this idea a while ago, and I really want to make this a thing. I want to be able to do an entire magic close-up set using borrowed objects. Imagine that, just turning up to a magic gig without a big case, without a bag, or even any stuff in your pockets, and just do magic with things that people have. Maybe you're in a restaurant and you use the fork and do some fork bending. Maybe you get the table and a bottle and you do bottle through table. I would love to be able to do close-up magic with no props. I think that is, you know, if you could do magic, you would do it like that. Sadly, because I'm not actually a real wizard, no matter how many times people tell me I look like Daniel Radcliffe, that is a little bit difficult to achieve, so that's an ongoing mission to be able to do magic with no actual props that I get out. Um, so, with all that being said, I'm now going to move on to the next section of this video in which I react to some fooling magic. So this is Fool Me. Let's see if I can be fooled. So I've got the emails up here and we're going to start with one of the first ones that got sent in. This is from Luke Swinkles. Uh, he says, back when I was a magician, I had an idea for a four ace routine. The idea started about three years ago, but I was not able to finish it and stopped for a long time. As part of the online magic tournament, I got into practicing magic again. Oh, that's really good to hear. And tried it one more time. This is a collection of flashes and noob mistakes, but it's the best I can do. Very dark. But, uh, yeah, okay, let's go. I think we can see the cards here. Ooh, okay. Four Ace production. Nice. Okay. Is one of them going to vanish? I feel like that is what's going to happen. I don't know. Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions here. Alright. Ace is on the table. Mm hmm. Okay. Wow, those gestures though. Magical gestures galore, this routine is. Okay. I've not seen any flashes so far. He said it's a collection of flashes and noob mistakes. I think that's very self-critical. What are these cards? Blanks. Oh. I like routines like this though, where it flows from one trick to another. Yeah, the flashes aren't that bad, to be honest. I think he's being too self-critical. You've got to believe in yourself a bit more, Luke. Because actually, those were quite good. And that's a difficult bit of sleight of hand. That's not a bit of sleight of hand I could comfortably do. If I tried to do that, I would definitely flash. <laughs> I love the... <laughs> I love that. Okay, interesting. Is the whole deck blank? Ah... I wasn't expecting that. Ace is on top, very nice. Ooh, actually, the deck's disappeared. I wasn't fooled, but I was definitely entertained, and that last deck vanish was actually done really, really cleanly. The start of the routine was very good. I felt like the middle was probably the weakest part, if I can give some criticism, but the end, with the deck disappearing, was uh, really well executed. So well done, Luke. Don't put yourself down so much. That was actually a really good routine. Maybe a little bit of polishing required, but um, other than that, it was very good. Wasn't a fooler though, so let's find another video. Who has sent in a video? This is from Zach Ladden, who has sent in this video. Okay, coin magic. I'm glad that it's not all card stuff. That was very clean. <sighs> Quick vanishes or what? Zach, that was pretty insane. That was great, actually. I really enjoyed that. This next video is from Mika Magic, and I have no idea what it is, but it looks like a card trick. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> All right, then. Not messing around. That was a really good deck vanish. Ah. Huh. Again, no messing around. It got straight to the point there. That was really, really good. 
Have I been fooled by that? I don't think it fooled me. I can think of a couple of ways it might be done, and I'm not sure exactly what method that was using. But either way, really, really powerful magic. And if you showed that to someone who wasn't a magician, I guarantee they'd be fooled because I'm not entirely sure. So if you would like to be in the next episode of Fool Me, make sure to submit your videos of any kind to YouTube at CavernBooth.com. You can send any style of magic, any length of video under two or three minutes, and I will hopefully react to it in the next episode of Fool Me. And apologies if your video did not make it into this video, but I want to leave room for the footage that I shot at Blackpool because there were some great magicians who came up to me and showed me magic for the camera and I want to share that magic with you right now. So we're going to start with a guy called Callum who came up to me and showed me this card trick. So enjoy! Okay, so I just went out for some food, I come back and the place is flooded with people including this guy, we'll come to him in a second. These people, I don't even know if you can see how far this queue goes. They are all queuing, I think they're all queuing, for Lance Burton and Matt King, I think. There's a lot of people. It's just crazy. I don't think I'm going to get in the queue because it will take hours and I probably won't get there. But I've also bumped into Callum Derbyshire. Got your name right? Yes, it is. Fantastic. You're going to show me a trick, is that right? I am. I'm going to try. <laughs> Hopefully. This is like live for me. So if he fools me, well done. <laughs> Alright, oh, good luck. Really I don't know what you're going to do, I have no idea. Okay. Nice cards though. Thank you. <laughs> got these here. Really nice cards. Uh, got them down there. But uh, yeah. So they're all different. Yeah. As you as you can clearly see. Yeah. So what I want you to do is just say stop. Stop right there. Just there. Yeah. Take a look. Show the camera. You know what? Got it. I'll even have you hold on to them. Alright. Fantastic. All right. Now keep them there. I will. Because if you don't, I'm out of a job. So. You know your card, the camera knows the card. Yeah. I know the card. I don't know the card. <laughs> you don't know the card? No. So if I did, that would be, that'd be pretty good. Okay. Well, what if I told you I had your card in my back pocket? Um, that would be pretty cool. No palming or anything like that? No, no, no. Check it out. I told you. I have your card in my back pocket. That's cheating. Your card, right here. Right here. But actually, you know what? Yeah, no, it is cheating. You're right. So what, what, for the first time, I don't know this card. What was it? It was the Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts. Okay, bring the deck down. Okay. So I can just... Two. <laughs> awesome! That, that, that is awesome. This is the first time I've held one of these decks as well. Yeah, I feel yeah, very yeah. privileged. <laughs> that was great. Thanks, man. Fantastic. Have you got an Instagram? I do. Callum D Magic. Go follow it. I am posting a while. It'll, while, be, but post it'll be on the screen about here. All right. If I'm right, hopefully, okay. I, hopefully I get it right. Awesome right. stuff. Thanks, Thanks very much. I will follow your Instagram. That right there was some magic from Callum. So make sure to go and follow him on Instagram if you want to. And next up, we have a magician who has only been doing magic for two days when I filmed this. Seriously, he started magic at the beginning of the convention and already has learned a couple of really quite powerful tricks. It's actually quite kind of scary. Um, I sort of wish I'd have started magic at his age because I'd be so much better now. Uh, I know that this guy is going to have a great future in magic. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to let the magic speak for itself. Here it is. Um, she's, uh, she's a card. She's a card? Yeah, any card. <laughs> oh. Wrong way up. <laughs> I'm out. Oh, my mind. Okay, there you go. Choose a card. Any card. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, pushing sorry, them everywhere. Sorry. Oh, my God. I actually... <laughs> I actually got the one I was going to go for when it was um, face up. Well, okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wow. uh, okay, nice. Um, for two days. Two days! And he's already a beast at the sponge balls. Ah, oh, great stuff. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure to click the thumbs up down below. That is the easiest way of helping me out. And if you're new to the channel, you can also subscribe down below. I also want to end by saying a quick thank you to the people that have been joining my $5 magic club. That is really appreciated that you want to learn the magic that I put on there. 
That is the sort of magic that I can't teach on YouTube, so if you want to learn some slightly more complicated and possibly very devious tricks, um, head over to the $5 Magic Club, where there is currently a lot of great mentalism happening. I'm posting mentalism tutorials every Friday there, and actually last Friday I posted two. One was uh, a couple of methods on how to unlock borrowed phones, which is really powerful, and the other one was how to look someone in the eye and tell them their bank card details. Um, there's also a load of tricks where you can read star signs and the names of pets and proper propless mentalism, like seriously propless. They don't pick it out of a deck of cards, they don't write it down, there's no forcing, no stooges, nothing like that. It is literally propless mentalism. And it's some of the most powerful stuff I perform, so I can't teach it on YouTube, but I can teach it on the $5 club. So if you're interested in that, make sure to go to patreon.com slash cavernbooth and sign up for the $5 tier. Just $5 a month, you get access to everything, including all of the sleight of hand projects, like the second deal and the top change and all of the exclusive tutorials I've been posting on there over the past few months. I don't want this to sound like an advert, but I just want to let you guys know about it. Um, so there we go. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next episode of CVN. I think you're gonna have to be careful. We're gonna have to go there.